My take on classic chocolate brownies is guaranteed to put a smile on anyone's face, and not just when they're fresh out of the oven. Blondies. Stock up on these delicious blondies. They'll keep for up to a week, and it's a great way of getting ahead if you're expecting guests round. First off, melt the butter for the mixture. We've had hundreds and hundreds of brownies. The sort of white chocolate version, i.e. blondies, are amazing. A little bit more subtle. Keep a little knob of butter for the end, just to grease your baking tray. Turn the gas down and gently melt that butter. Cast the sugar into the bowl. Just give that butter a little whisk. It sort of makes the mixture a little bit lighter, slightly fluffy. Off with the gas. A pinch of salt in the sugar, then make a little well in the middle and sort of whisk. You can see it's already gone nice and blonde. Love it. Give that a really good mix. And the secret with the butter being slightly warm, sort of, it melts the sugar and nice and smooth. Lovely. A teaspoon of vanilla extract in. Next, lightly whisk in two whole eggs. Just give them a little beat. This is such a delicious recipe, yet so simple. Whisk in the eggs. Looking for that nice, sort of rich, textured, smooth paste. You can see why we call these blondies. Beautiful. Next, a teaspoon of baking powder. Baking powder in. Then half a teaspoon of baking soda. That aerates the mixture and gives it that little tartness. You'll see this sort of rise instantly the minute they hit the oven. And then your flour. Whisk with one hand and just slowly add half the flour first. Get that all mixed up. Make sure that mixture is really nice and smooth. Check it occasionally. No lumps. Half the flour in, and then the other half in. You'll feel it sort of almost go nice and firm. And that's why it's so important to add the flour in stages. It stops the mixture going lumpy. It should be just dropping off the whisk. Beautiful. Change over from a whisk to a spoon. Next, I want some texture, some nice sweet chewiness to the blondies. Dried cranberries. They bake beautifully, but it gives the blondie a really nice sort of chewy sweetness in the center. Next, my white chocolate. I'm not gonna grate it, I'm gonna chop it up. Just slice it like little bits of shrapnel. I want the chocolate like little matchsticks dotted around. Now, chocolate in, lovely. Fold that in. I want a nice, even distribution of those wonderful dried cranberries. Don't over mix it. I don't want to break up that chocolate. A nice, even mix of cranberries and chocolate. You can see the chocolate. There'll be parts of the chocolate in the oven that will actually melt. It'll be like little pools of white melted chocolate in the centre. Now, baking tray. Small little knob of butter. I'm going to grease the baking tray and line it. Some greaseproof paper and just overextend it. Shiny side out, dull side hits the bottom of the tray. In. Greaseproof allows me to maximise on the white chocolate inside the mix. No greaseproof paper, the chocolate can melt and almost stick to the tray, so the paper is just a really nice insurance policy. Secondly, we want that rise and that sort of crispness. Now, with the mix, get your spatula all the way round. I don't want to see anything left in that bowl. Position the bowl over your tray, nice and carefully. Lovely. Don't leave that slice in the bowl. Nobody's licking that one. And then just take the back of the spatula, go into the corners, push, and come back into the middle. Turn the tray around. Let it work to your advantage. Try and get it evenly positioned in the tray. If it goes in even, it cooks evenly. Make sure you smooth out the top of the blondie with the back of the spatula. And then into the oven. It's gonna rise, it's nice and crisp. 
for all that soft gooiness in the centre. Bake your blondies at 180 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes. That smells incredible. Look at that crisp edge on the outside and that sort of soft, gooey centre. Leave that to cool down and it's going to sort of firm up and wrinkle, but it'll stay nice and gooey in the centre. Once it's cooled down, take it out and start slicing. Mouth-watering blondies, a fantastic easy treat to have on hand for yourself or to share. My next recipe is a time-honoured British classic, but with the addition of spices, it's given a new lease of life. Fragrant spice rice pudding. I love cooking with spices, but you don't have to just cook savoury dishes. Using aromatics and spices across desserts takes your puddings to a completely different level. First off, our spices. This is a fresh vanilla pod, fragrant and packed full of flavour. Use the back of the knife, and flatten it. That removes all those little seeds off the skin of the vanilla pod. Take your knife, slice down the middle, and then when you open that up, the smell is incredible. Take the tip of the knife, and you scrape inside, and look, all those seeds dying to come out. That is incredible. There are thousands of seeds still ingrained to the pod, so put them in to the casserole. Cardamom. Powerful, spicy. Take two little pods, place your knife on top, and lightly crack them. Cracking the cardamom pods helps release all the amazing flavour. Cloves. Gives it that kind of aniseed flavour with a lot of depth. One, two, three. Cinnamon stick. Snap and in. Just smelling that level of fragrance, you can imagine what the rice pudding is going to taste of. Turn on the heat. Lightly toast those spices just a couple of seconds. And what's going to happen is just going to sort of enhance those spices in a way that it just draws out an even more powerful fragrance. Coconut milk in. Sugar. Two tablespoons. Milk. And then a couple of tablespoons of cream. Bring it slowly to the boil to allow the flavours to infuse. And this rice pudding reminds me of my time in India, where I got really into that chai tea fragrance, because it was just so delicious and so comforting. Take a lime in. The lime just cuts through the richness of the coconut. Gives it that nice little bit of acidity. Goes fantastically well with the cinnamon. And that fresh vanilla, nice. Have a taste. Mm. Now, let's come up to the boil. Give it a nice little clean round the outside and in with the rice. Use 200 grams of pudding rice. Don't wash it beforehand because the starch helps thicken the rice pudding in the oven. And just turn that down to a light simmer. And the pudding rice starts to open up and it absorbs all that coconut, vanilla, cardamom, clove and cinnamon. Bring it up to the ball gently and cook it out for three to five minutes. Boiling it rapidly, the rice opens up and it goes into mush. So we want to keep that nice texture of that sort of fragrant rice pudding on a gentle simmer. Next, a little luxury. I'm going to show you how I take this simple, delicious, aromatic rice pudding to a completely different level. Here's what I do. Take two egg yolks, separate them. Now give that a really nice whisk. Two nice tablespoons of mascarpone cheese. Whisk that into the egg yolks. Just so it's nice and smooth. It's almost like finishing the rice pudding in a delicious custard. Turn off the gas, add that into the rice pudding. And what happens, it starts to enrich and really thicken this rice pudding and takes it to a completely different level. The rice is still not cooked, but started to go nice and soft. You can just see how it's opening up. But look, it's like rich, aromatic lava bubbling away. Finally, grate more citrus zest, the lime on top. Roasted, caramelized lime zest on top of a rice pudding is phenomenal. 
then put it in the oven for 15 minutes at 200 degrees to finish cooking the rice and develop the intensely aromatic flavours. Look at that. An incredibly fragrant rice pudding. How beautiful does that look? Spices are a brilliant way of helping classic dishes come alive. I'll guarantee you'll never, ever have had a rice pudding like this before. My next recipe is a proper British classic that's super simple to cook and costs next to nothing, a delicious apple crumble. Crumbles are the perfect way to use fruit when it's in season. There's lots of it about, it's nice and cheap, but most importantly, the fruit's at its absolute best. First off, I'm gonna make a really nice light caramel. Pan on, nice and low. Great two apples. And this helps to almost sort of pure the apple so much quicker. And there's a lot of flavour in the skin, so don't worry about peeling the fruit. Whether it's pears, plums, peaches, flavour's in the skin. Nice. To start the caramel, a couple of tablespoons of sugar. The sugar helps to get rid of the tartness in the apple. A touch of cinnamon. That starts to make it a little spicy. Open up your vanilla and just scrape out all those seeds. Now, this just makes it light and fragrant. All those seeds in to the sugar. When making caramel, be patient and always swirl the dish instead of stirring it. When the sugar goes brown, add the apple. Mm. That starts to sort of cool down the caramel, but it gives it a really nice sort of caramelized puree. Apple's almost disintegrating. It smells incredible. Turn the gas down. Slice up two apples. It's a crumble that's got no frills. Straightforward. No faffing around. No peeling of the skin. I want them to sort of stand out from the caramel. Apples in. Now those nice thick chunks of apple are sort of almost bedding itself into the puree. Dried cranberries. Gives it that nice sort of shock in the texture. Sweet and chewy. I want it to sort of taste zesty, spicy, so sit the lemon zest on top of your apples and cranberry. Fresh lemon juice over. And that just gives that extra acidic kick. Takes the cranberries, the apples, the caramel, and the cinnamon to another level. Turn the gas off. Just let that sit. And let's concentrate on the crumble. Flour in. A couple of tablespoons of demerara sugar. Sugar helps to get the topping nice and crispy. Butter in. Give that a nice little sort of rub. What we're looking for is like a, a breadcrumb mixture. Lightly season it with a touch of cinnamon. And the demerara sugar sort of helps to get a nice fine crumble mix and it stops the butter from sort of melting in that flour. So that's the basic crumble mix, but I'm not finished yet. Muesli. Two thirds crumble. One third muesli. Mix that in. If you haven't got muesli, then crunchy granola works brilliantly too. Lovely. Now, start off in the center and work your way around. I want the crispiness on the top, the puree on the bottom with the caramel, and then the texture in the center. A good tip. Turn the gas back on. I want it bubbling before it goes in the oven, because then you've just got to cook the top. So as soon as you see that caramel, Starting to bubble down the side. In she goes. Let's go. Bake at 200 degrees Celsius for 12 to 14 minutes until golden brown. Smells amazing. <sighs> Beautiful. Still bubbling. And look at it. A delicious but very simple crumble with apples at their absolute best. Beautiful.